Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, some 40 million Mexicans live on less than $5 a day. For them, tortillas made from ground maize are a major source of sustenance. But this basic food may soon be priced out of reach because of speculation by international traders. UK's The Ecologist investigates. Coming up on Earth Focus. The cost of food across the world is on the rise, and many have blamed the scale of the price spikes on one thing rampant food speculation on the global financial markets. The ecologist travelled to Mexico, the birthplace of corn, to find out how speculation is forcing up the price of the country's staple food, with profound effects felt across Mexican society. In the mountains of Oaxaca State in southern Mexico, it is coffee production that fuels the local economy. Rural communities like these are not self-sufficient in food and are dependent on a cash crop, making them vulnerable to sudden price rises of staples such as corn. Esta es la planta del café. Tiene aproximadamente ocho años y ya está en plena producción. Este, nosotros estamos preocupados porque nosotros Cuando sube el, el precio del café, entonces nosotros este, no tenemos este, café y cuando estamos produciendo nos preocupa que vuelva a bajar la bolsa. Lorenzo Hernández and his wife, Genovena Oliveira, look after their grandchildren during the day while the rest of the family work in the coffee fields. Porque hace dos años valía pues dos pesos. Dos pesos, este... El kilo ahora ya vale seis pesos, hasta seis cincuenta ya vale. El maíz y la tortilla pues ya valía antes dos pesos, tres pesos y ahorita ya vale doce pesos el kilo. El precio ha subido este bastante, no solamente ha ido al doble sino que ha ido este, ahora sí, el triple. Food price volatility on this scale has been linked directly to speculation. Food speculation is basically the way in which banks and other financial traders can essentially bet on the price of food. And this takes place through what are known as futures markets. So these were originally set up to help farmers and food producers and buyers to kind of uh, manage their risk of prices changing over time. But instead what we're seeing now is other people coming in who've got no connection with the food supply whatsoever coming in and using these markets just to bet on the rising and falling price of food. The speculation is going stronger and stronger. Uh, right now, we think that about 20% of the total market for corn is in the area of investor, financial investors, speculators that are just making a contract and reselling the contract. They don't need the grain for any other purpose. At a wholesale market in Oaxaca City, Traders have seen prices rise in recent months. El maíz ha estado subiendo de precio por la helada grande que se vio en febrero, que afectó el Sinaloa es el país que abastece casi toda la República Mexicana de de maíz. In Sinaloa, that is the principal state of production of corn, there were uh, frost, very heavy frost, so the production expected was, went down about half of the total production was lost. So during the year, we had been importing corn from the US and from South Africa also. What we see in somewhere like Mexico is that um, when there's a good local harvest, um, things are fine, they can rely on the local crops. But increasingly, particularly in Mexico, uh, domestic maize production is being undermined by free trade deals with America, where maize is much more heavily subsidized. So now what we see is when there are poor harvests, Mexico now relies on importing food from abroad, which is where the high prices that have come from food speculation really hit them hardest. For Mexicans, that means higher prices for their daily tortilla. El, eh, México es un pueblo de maíz, forma parte de nuestra cultura. Eh, el, el maíz es no solamente un eh, grano, ¿no? 
sino que es toda una, toda una visión del mundo. El maíz es el principal alimento de los mexicanos. Eh, nuestro territorio es centro de origen y diversificación genética del grano, lo cual significa que en México eh, se crearon las primeras plantas del maíz. Y esto lo venimos este, consumiendo desde, desde, desde la niñez, desde hace ya muchos años. Nuestros abuelos, nuestros antepasados nos este, enseñaron que eso es una alimentación este, ahora sí importante para nosotros. La mayor parte del dinero que ganamos va a la, a la compra de, de los alimentos. Hay algunas este, familias que, que no les alcanza el dinero, están comprando los alimentos, y entonces ya los, los niños que van a la escuela ya no tienen útiles, ya no tienen, este, ya no tienen ropa como para que asistan a una escuela. Es no solo hunger que es el real problema aquí. Has massive impacts across different aspects of poverty. So, for example, we found that when food prices have risen, families have had to eat less fruit, less vegetables, less meat and dairy, and they have a far less healthy diet. We've also seen households that have had to eat into their savings or take out loans just to be able to afford food. And we've also seen them have to cut back on expenditure such as healthcare and education. And all these things have much longer term impacts than just the impact of, uh, of a shortage of food in the short term. The impact of the higher prices is felt throughout the expenditures of the poorer Mexicans and then subsequently it's felt in terms of a lower demand for other things within the Mexican economy, and which is a real concern because we don't see the domestic demand growing as fast as would be necessary. Food speculation has become a real issue now because of deregulation of these markets that happened about 10 years ago. And what we've seen since then is the big investment banks Um, people like Barclays Capital and Goldman Sachs moving into commodity markets. So over the last 10 years, we've seen about $100 billion dollars pour into these markets, flooding, as I said, the kind of farmers and food producers that normally rely on these markets and overwhelming them. And that's why this has become such a problem now. In an unusual move, the Mexican government has itself begun speculating on the food futures market in an effort to counter volatility in corn prices. But many believe that the only answer is regulation. My particular opinion is if you look at any regulation in the market, you've got to look at some sort of regulations or some sort of movements or some sort of actions which will limit the volatility in the market as you move into the future. I'm not really worried about the large money coming in. I'm worried about the coming in, moving out, and coming in, moving out. That's the, that's the real concern on the future. So what we're calling for is a limit to be introduced that limits the amount of the market these traders can hold. At the moment, they're dominating the market. They make up much more of the market than farmers and other traders who actually rely on these markets day in, day out. What we want to see is new rules brought in that cap that, that limit their influence and can then allow prices to be more fair, more stable and more transparent for the future. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.